In this video, we're going to be using the node voltage method to find the voltage VO, which is the voltage across this 6K resistor here. Now we know the first thing we're going to do when using the node voltage method is to identify all of our essential nodes and choose one of those essential nodes to be our reference node. So when we look at this, we know we're going to have one big node down here, right? So I'm just going to choose this node down here to be our reference node. I'm going to choose this point right here. Okay, now that we have labeled our essential node, we have another node right here. I'm going to call this an essential node, and this I'm going to label as node 1. And we have another essential node right here. I'm going to call this node 2. Now, because they want us to use the node voltage method, I would like the voltage at node 1 and the voltage at node 2. Once I have the voltages at each of these nodes, I'm then able to find anything else I would like to in this particular circuit, right? So let's begin. We're going to write a node voltage equation at node 1. Okay, so when we start to write a node voltage equation, we're going to assume the current is flowing away from this node. So we're going to have the voltage V1, which is the voltage at node 1, minus 6 divided by 3000. So we have V1 minus 6 divided by 3000 plus, we're going to assume the current is going to flow in this direction here. So we're going to have V1 over 4. We have V1 over 4, and that's going to be a 4K resistor, so we have 4000. Plus, we're going to have current flowing in this direction now. But wait a minute. We have a sole voltage source in this branch that's going to be connecting these two nodes. So there's something we need to realize here. Let's see if we know the voltage at any of these nodes. Well, we know we don't know the voltage at node 1 because we were just writing an equation for that. Now for node 2, when we look at this, there is no way we can identify what's going to be the voltage at node 2. Therefore, this is going to be known as the super node method because we have a voltage source that is in between two essential nodes and we do not know the value of the voltage at any of those nodes. So this is when we have to use the super node method. Right? So when we use the super node method, we're just going to ignore this voltage source for now and we're going to write a constraint equation later. But let's start to use the node voltage method at node 2. So we're going to have V2 over 6000 when we continue to write our equation. And we're going to use the same equation we started for node 1. So instead of it being the node voltage at node 1, we're actually going to say node voltage at super node. Right? because of this voltage source that is in between these two nodes with the unknown voltages. Okay, so we're going to have V2 over 6000. Let me just clean this up. So we're going to have, we know this is V2. V2, which is the voltage at node 2 divided by 6000, plus we're going to have the voltage V2 divided by the current that's going to flow in this direction now, and that's going to flow through this 4K resistor and this 2K resistor, which means the same current is going to flow through these resistors, so we can just add them up to get the total resistance of 6K. Therefore, for the current flowing through this branch, we're going to have V2 over 4,000 plus 2,000, and that equals zero. So when we simplify this, we're going to get V1 minus 6 divided by 3,000 plus V1 over 4,000 plus V2 over 6,000 plus V2 over 6,000, and all of that equals 0. Now let's start to get rid of the denominators. We know the LCD in this particular situation is going to be 12,000, right? So we're going to multiply each term by 12,000. When we do that, that's going to leave us with 4V1 minus 24 plus 3V1 plus 2V2 
plus 2v2 and all of that equals 0. When we simplify this now, we're going to be left with 7v1 plus 4v2 equals a positive 24. So we have our first equation. I'm going to call this equation 1. And this is going to be the node voltage at the super nodes. Now let's write a constraint equation involving this 12 volt source, right? So the polarity is going to be from negative to positive when we start from node 1. But if we start from node 2, the polarity is going to go positive to negative. Therefore, we're going to say the constraint equation can be written as V2 minus V1 equals 12 volts. So we can say constraint equation We're going to have the voltage at node 2 minus the voltage at node 1 equals 12 volts. Of course, we can rewrite this to put V1 in front. So we can rewrite this as negative V1 plus V2 equals 12. I'm going to call this equation 2. Now, when we look at this, we have two equations with two unknowns. And those two unknowns are going to be the same exact unknowns, which is V1 and V2. Therefore, you can use simultaneous equations or you can use the matrix method. I'm just going to use the matrix method to solve for the voltages V1 and V2. Let me just draw a matrix really quickly. We know the unknowns are going to be V1 and V2. So for equation one, we're going to have a positive seven and we're going to have a positive four and that equals 24. Now for equation two, we have negative one, positive one, and that equals 12, right? So when we start to solve for this now, we're going to take the inverse of A and multiply it by B. Therefore, that's going to give us V1 equals negative 2.181 and V2 equals 9.8181 and we know these are going to be measured in volts. So when we look at this now, they want us to find the voltage VO, which is the voltage across this 6K resistor. But as we can see, if we know the value of the voltage at node 2, we also know the value of the voltage across this 6K resistor because the voltage at node 2 is going to be the same voltage across this 6K resistor, which they labeled as VO. Therefore, we can say V2 equals VO. Therefore, VO equals 9.81. 8 volts. So this is going to be our answer for this particular problem. VO equals V2 and we found the voltage at node 2. Therefore, this is how we were able to solve this particular problem. And it was a super node problem because we had a sole voltage source between two essential nodes and we did not know the voltage at any of those essential nodes. So we had to use the supernode method in order to solve this problem.